report out tonight is warning about metals found in some dark chocolates. There may be a hidden danger to some dark chocolate. Hershey has been sued by a consumer who accused the company of selling dark chocolate that contains harmful levels of lead and cadmium. Cow products could have dangerous levels of heavy metals inside of them. It turns out Consumer Report just did a study and out of 28 chocolate bars, 23 of them had toxic levels of cadmium and lead. Well, it's no surprise because when I first got started with Crucial 4, my favorite food out there that I was searching for was cacao or chocolate. And along my path, here we are 15 years later, it doesn't surprise me that most chocolate has dangerous levels of these heavy metals inside of it. And there's other things that this consumer report didn't even talk about. Mycotoxins, the fact that most cacao is not single origin harvested, how it's harvested, how it's manufactured. There's actually other heavy metals that the consumer report didn't even talk about. They're a major concern for me. And it's again, no surprise because guys, chocolate is a billion dollar industry. And you know, we always hear about the people that live the longest lives. They always talk about how dark chocolate's in the mix. But at the end of the day, we are becoming basically induced into an environment we have no control over and the heavy metals and toxicity just keeps rising. And if you don't filter that stuff out, then it gets stuck in you. Now, I'm excited to show you guys our heavy metal analysis for lead and cadmium, but, and mercury and arsenic. And there's a few other things out there, like I just mentioned that don't even get talked about though. I'm gonna hint on here. I wanna talk about something first and specifically about cadmium. You know, a lot of people don't realize this, but cadmium is a naturally occurring metal inside cacao. And if you don't ferment it properly, those cadmium levels can be extremely high. So the way that cacao is processed is very important. But the number one thing that I find to be the most important is the quality, the genetics. Where are they coming from? Because you guys, in the cacao industry, most manufacturing facilities don't just get cacao from one origin. They get it from all these different places and you get basically a conundrum, all these different cacao. And this is lack of quality control basically. But look, it's a billion dollar industry. People gotta have their chocolate, right? <laughs> well, again, you know, this is part of the problem because when you're manufacturing cacao and you're getting all different types of varieties and you're not fermenting it properly, this is what can lead to a lot of these issues. But at Crucial 4, we don't do that. We have a single origin cacao. That means all of our cacao comes from one to area or areas that we have went in and tested and made sure. And typically it's what's known as a Riba Criollo. It's a wild variety or what we call wild simulated farming variety of cacao that's been around since day one, okay? This cacao, it, a lot of people might call their cacao, uh, what do they say, ceremonial grade. This stuff is beyond any ceremonial grade because it's where we go to get it. And I hope we can flash some pictures up here because I've got some really awesome pictures on my travels. And guys, if you're getting chocolate and it's organic and whatnot, the majority of chocolate, 95% of chocolate grows in the canopy of the jungle. That means it's growing low down in the jungle and there's a canopy of like trees above it. Our cacao does not, that's not our cacao. And again, this is like 95% of cacao. And this is part of the problem and part of a problem that's not even mentioned in the consumer report. And that's mycotoxins. You know, for years people would say, oh yeah, I eat chocolate. I get the shakes, I get the shivers from it. So I stopped eating it. Very similar reaction that people have with ca coffee. Well, what is that? Well, that's mycotoxins, guys, that's fungi. And again, when you're growing cacao in the canopy of the jungle, it's very humid, it's not getting direct sun. What do you think is gonna happen? With most chocolate being basically farmed, right? Not wild simulated, but farmed from this genetically altered hybridized variety that's grown in a condition that's not optimal for cacao. It's no wonder why so many of those chocolate bars failed the test. Now it's time to guys show you guys our test. Let's flash up our lead and cadmium levels. Oh, and don't forget the mercury, even though ours was non-detected, as you can see, look at the lead count. Look at the cadmium count. It's 
way below standards. And like I said, cadmium is naturally occurring in cacao, so I'm not con too concerned with it is because I know the process of our chocolate, but I also know that a little bit in there is that's just part of the game. And when something's naturally occurring, a metal is naturally occurring inside of food stuff, there's other things happening that actually allow that to not be as harmful as one might think. But one of the things that happens with all the rest of the cacao in the cacao industry and why those levels are so high is because they're not processing it correctly. But the other thing that's not even mentioned is the manufacturing facilities and how certain heavy metals used to like grind down the chocolate, whether they're making powder, nibs, paste, this is leaching into your cacao. You know, you're fermenting something. So when you ferment something, you're changing the pH of it. And when you change the pH, usually to get it stabilized in a fermentation process, it's a low pH. Well, it might be considered acidic. Well, imagine if you put something acidic inside certain elements or metal compounds like brass fittings, maybe things are flowing through, or housing them in certain equipment that isn't of the highest integrity. That's right, guys. It's going to leach into your product. And this is another reason why so many cacao products failed or chocolate bars failed the consumer test. And it's something that we pay super close attention to. When we make our paste, we have these giant stone grinders. I want to flash those up right quick. See those stone grinders? That's how we're processing our cacao. So again, guys, it's more than just the genetics, which to me is the most important. It's more than just the manufacturing center, because obviously the genetics lay in that. And if you're getting hybridized cacao, that's crap. And most manufacturers, it's a billion dollar industry, guys. They're getting cacao from everywhere and anywhere. So you're getting all types of mixed varieties. You're getting mixed farming practices. You're getting all that. So major concerns to be looked at. And then of course, how is it fermented? Is it fermented too long? Is it fermented in metal? Is it fermented in old school wooden barrels? How is all this done? This is super important. Now you guys might be wondering, why in the heck don't you have a chocolate bar? And we have had a chocolate bar in the past. And why in the heck aren't you selling cacao powder? Why aren't you talking more about this? Well guys, I've actually been talking about this for a long time. And we used to have a chocolate bar. But our flagship product in breakfast has cacao in it. And that's why I'm here to be able to show you guys a product that I have been using for over 13 years. And I get my heavy metal analysis test done regularly. And my levels are low. It's not there. And I'm eating my chocolate about six days a week, if not seven. And you can ask my wife. And I've done this, guys, since day one. So, well, actually not since day one. Because in day one, I was getting crappy cacao. But I've been doing this for about 10 years now. So about a decade. And I consume chocolate every day. Because I do find that cacao is a super beneficial food. It's a chocolate that the shaman showed me in South America. A potentiator. It's one of those things that can open you up because it's a vasodilator. It's a cardiovascular vasodilator, not a central stir, not a central nervous system stimulant like coffee. Not for you and you might be like, dude, you seem kind of crazy about chocolate. Well, I sell chocolate and I consume chocolate. <laughs> so I wanna know. And with the world the way it is today, if you don't know, you can pretty much guarantee when you have a substance that's a billion dollar industry and most of it goes to Halloween candy and crap like so, it's gonna be garbage. So you have to be particular. And I hope that I've given you guys tips and tricks on how to do that. I hope I've given you guys reassurance that, you know, chocolate's an amazing food for you. Number one source of magnesium, iron, and chromium in the world, food source there is. Um, number one source of antioxidants in the world of any food stuff. It's an amazing food, but it has to be done right. So anyways, I invite you guys to try our in breakfast because you can try our cacao today with it. And in breakfast is an ancient formula. It's a shamanic formula that I've put a twist on by also working with Vedic herbalists and Taoist herbalists. And we've created something magical. And I've been eating my in breakfast blend for over a decade now. And if I don't have it, oh my my. And you can ask my other people in my community that have been on it as long as I have. There's just something about it. And I have to say, I think a lot of it has to do with the cacao. So signing off here. If you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'd love to answer them because chocolate's what got me in this game. And boy, oh boy, I hope it keeps me there because I absolutely love it. It delivers so much for me and my family. 
And again, it's done right and you can feel that. All right guys, signing off. Thank you much. Uh,